All right, it is midday Sunday, February 5th, 2012. We are here with uh, Ryan Kelly at the Occupy Pittsburgh encampment. How are you doing, Ryan? All right. All right. All right. Well, tell us real quick, why have you been occupying? Ah, that's, that's, a, a, that's a good question. It's a very, very good question. Um, I know in uh, the last few years, uh, I was part of a, like, I guess you would call it the global consciousness movement. Um, just like, just uh, working on things and doing things to uh, just uh, raise people's like spiritual awareness about, about life, about the reason why we're here, and about how like we're evolving as humans. And that sort of uh, led me here. Um, but a lot of my friends that were involved with that are not as uh, pragmatic as me. And I felt like um, the first step in like getting people to to be able to work together and live together in in peace and uh, harmony is to is to live in intentional communities and participate in uh, the consensus process and consensus process gives each individual the power that I believe people need to like live like a fuller happier life because you have a direct say in what goes on in your life um, well, l l let me ask you some things right there because you said a mouthful yeah. first of all as far as the global consciousness movement is that I imagine it doesn't have a P.O. box but is this a you know, is is this a a, a phrase or a, an idiom that is around out there? I, I had not heard of it before. Badge number tomorrow. Yep. Um, I, it's not one specific organization. It, it like it'll it can be like. But th so, it isn't just in your head. This is something that no, other this people. This is something that's going on. It's okay. from uh, people. From people like um, like David Ike to. Less weird people. You know? um, <laughs> okay, like, how do you spell Ike in case people want to Google him? I think it's uh, I C K E. Okay. And Ike is the people who believe like the head of corporations and all politicians are reptile people. Oh wow. Yeah. And now, Yoel, this brings me to my ne next question. You said something about the other people involved in this aren't as practical as you. No, no, not involved in this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have people involved in. Yeah. Well, I mean, in, my, in G C M, <laughs> not as practical as people in Oc. So, so, what is it about this that seems uh, struck you as practical and uh, you know uh, practical? Um, well, uh, the group of friends that I uh, hung out before this, and we're really not that close anymore since I've been participating in this, because uh, they felt like it wasn't worth their time, and I felt like this is worth all of my time. Um, I, I guess a generalized statement of that would be um, I don't believe um, hallucinogenics are the answer to life ah. the universe and everything okay. um, you also said something about that uh, um, excuse me I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to recollect now that the uh, the, the Occupy was uh, you know uh, it was about forming intentional communities and living and solving problems yeah. uh, what have you learned about intentional communities and what have you learned about problem, communal problem solving in your experience here for a, about f almost four months now, I yeah. guess. Um, well, this isn't my first um, experience with an intentional community because um, over the course of the summer I was hitchhiking around the country and um, one of the people I ended up getting a ride with lived in an intentional community in the uh, middle of nowhere, Oregon, called Pleasureland. I know. I know. <laughs> Pleasureland. And and like it was just a small group of people that lived in the middle of Oregon and just um, composted their own shit, grew weed, and like took care of chickens. And they would, they were working class people. They like they just they lived together, and they wouldn't be able to to, to s sustain themselves if it weren't for each other. And and it's the same the same here. Really. So, so how does the how does this stack up compared to what you had? Uh... I mean, was it what you anticipated? Was the, were there were there challenges? Were there interesting solutions? How to, um, how, this this is much more than I anticipated. Um, the, the, like 
if you're watching this, you've probably been involved in the Occupy movement, and you there are a lot of interesting challenges, a, a lot of, because you just get a group of, because uh, in most intentional communities, it's a group of people that already have a rapport that come together and decide to live on their own and sustain themselves. And here, you have a situation where you have a group of people who mostly have never met before deciding to live together and work together. And that itself creates uh, a lot of interesting challenges. I, I would imagine it's also interesting because unlike in Oregon where they sort of find land that is, uh, maybe they can more comfortably claim, uh, you know, you know, this intentional community kind of sprung up in the middle of, you know, what a judge told us the other day was some bank's private property. Only in the wintertime. Um, only, yeah, in the wintertime, it's <laughs> clearly their private property. So, so how, how you, know, you know, why was it necessary and, and, you know, what did you learn from, you know, having it be, you, you, you know, why was it important to have it here? Um, as far as as far as I know, I think we're we were like the only one of the only, if not the only, occupied actually uh, have an encampment on the bank property. And um, what was the question? Um, why was it important to occupy here instead of you know you, you know doing your intentional community thing in like you know the woods or the the, the a barge in the river or wherever you yeah, go? Yeah, I, I mean I could live in the middle of nowhere and doing my own thing and like and be happy and live with the people that I love but this right here um, the, the banks are are central to the problems that are that the world is facing like I get annoyed when people just talk about America and but no it like it is the world we're all in in this together and like the banks control everything they control the money flow like it starts at the Federal Reserve Bank and it tri and it trickles down. Like oh, so are, so are you a Ron Paul uh, no. acolyte? No, because no. it sounds a little bit. Uh, the, no, you know. just because I believe that the Federal Reserve is a, a corrupt, fucked up system um, makes me a Ron Paul supporter. No, okay. yeah. I I don't endorse any politicians. I don't believe in politicians. Mm -hmm. um, but bank occupying bank property is is very symbolic because because. Like the issues, like with the banks, is core to like our movement's message and to the problems in the world. And this was just—I don't know—just kind of like a good statement to make and a good fuck you to the banks. Um, there's now there's two minutes left. I wanted to ask you one thing. I have a feeling some of the the viewers on the blog will be asking, or on YouTube or wherever it winds up. Um, you know, self-sustaining community uh, in some respects. You know, there weren't, any, we never got to the point where we were growing crops here. Uh, you know, we let them grow the tulips and, you know, that's, uh, that's been about it. Um, as far as self-sustaining goes, I mean, how, you know, when people say, oh, well, you guys were soliciting donations and, you know, you're hanging out at the, the bagelry across the street, you know, how, how is it self-sustaining? Well, by definition, it's not self-sustaining, but this is a very good first step for a, a good majority of people who have never had an experience in intentional communities. Mm -hmm. And there really wasn't, I mean, if we would have, like, if we would have started occupying now, if mm -hmm. this was, today was day one, I guarantee we would have started growing crops mm -hmm. and started growing our own food. But this is a, this, this was a good first step for a group of people who never experienced living yeah. in intentional communities. Yeah. And had this, you know, the, and there were some, you know, d decisions made and policy made, like you know, like that's a tobacco cigarette, for example, and they've been tobacco cigarettes here for, for quite some time. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, geez, it looks like we have forty-five seconds left. Is there anything else you want to uh, want to communicate? Um, consensus carpenter. No, I don't think there's right anything I can communicate in forty-five seconds nor ten minutes. Okay. Very good. So. Well, Ryan Kelly, thanks for uh, thanks for stopping and chatting with me. All right. Maybe there'll be a part two. Maybe there'll be a part two. All right. Take care.